NFL postgame after the Ravens and the Niners. The Super Bowl champion Ryan Clark is here. And Mike, if they meet in 48 days in the Super Bowl in a rematch, let's hope for a better ending. Here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, especially if you're a San Francisco fan, but even as just an NFL fan, can we just get a better game yeah. that's not so sloppy from one side? Let's show you what happened in case you were just catching up on everything that happened on the sports scene here on Christmas Day because these two teams, the best two teams in the NFL coming into the week, they had a combined plus 350 point differential, highest ever on a Monday Night Football from last week is reoccurring. He goes to the tent, he comes out of the game, in comes Sam Darnold. So hey. it's one minute to go, they got a score, and guess what, another interception. I'll tell you what though, Sam Darnold came out there throwing that thing like he ain't never played for the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> Five interceptions in this game for San Francisco, and the Ravens go into the Bay and win it 33-19. to Now, coming into this game, Brock Purdy was the odds-on favorite, according to ESPN Bet, to win the MVP. Uh, look at it now. Lamar, minus 200. Chris McCaffrey goes up to second. Again, Purdy entered the night, yeah. minus 250. He's now 10-1. to Here's a couple of other numbers you want to know. These are team-wise. Baltimore maintains the pace to be the number one overall seed in the AFC. Remember, that's crucial because, remember, only one team will get a buy in each conference. And the MVP award may go to Lamar, but it should go to the NFL schedule makers because the Dolphins <laughs> are playing the Ravens in six days. We can hardly wait for that. That will likely decide how the AFC seeding will be won back inside as soon as Harbaugh, Lamar, Brock, Shanahan, McCaffrey hit the podium. You'll hear it here live on SportsCenter. Let's start, though, with Lamar. 252 through the air, 45 on the ground, two touchdowns, and sorry, 49ers. Most importantly, no picks. What did you see from him, as Michael says, continuing to burnish his MVP candidacy? Well, when you look at Lamar Jackson, he's always going to be compared to his initial MVP year. Mm -hmm. So he's not necessarily facing his contemporary or his peers, but tonight it was about winning the football game. And when the game was tight, we saw Lamar Jackson go above and beyond the X's and O's. When you get into these big-time matchup, matchups, Coach Tomlin would call them A-player games. Your A-players have to step up. And that's what Lamar Jackson did. There were players tonight where he was the best player on the entire field and that didn't matter if it was Fred Warner it didn't matter if it was Traverius Ward or Nick Bosa it was about Lamar Jackson being unstoppable and we saw that start to take hold in the second half especially once the interceptions began to mount for the San Francisco 49ers on the other side though the worst game we've seen from Brock Purdy yeah. first uh, Niners quarterback to throw four interceptions in a game since 2015 what was it that led to that? Was it him? Was it Baltimore? Was it both? Listen, you knew coming into this game, these were two of the best defenses in football. Yeah, true. And Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens, was going to put pressure on Brock Purdy and try to confuse him on the back end. And sometimes you just run into really good players. You know when you'd watch Ed Reed or Troy Palomalu, you'd be like, God, Lee, the ball always finds this dude. It's very <laughs> much like that with Kyle Hamilton. And then you think about the play that Brandon Stevens makes where it goes to Marlon Humphrey and now Patrick Queen. We did see Brock Purdy get a little shook. We've always seen him compose or seen him be able to be poised in the pocket. He was not that tonight. I feel like the Baltimore Ravens got to him, not only physically, but I think they affected him mentally as well. And we saw, saw him start to wane as this game went on. It felt like Baltimore didn't go out there just to beat the Niners. They went no. out there to beat him up. No, they did. Listen, you, the Baltimore Ravens like fistfights. You know, like Roquan Smith, I listened to many of his pregame speeches. They're all about violence, <laughs> right? But that's the same thing we think and feel the Niners, yeah. about the San Francisco 49ers. And it was going to be who could inflict their will on the other team. And we saw the Baltimore Ravens do that. But it's about attacking the head, right? Attacking the head of the snake. And in this, in this particular uh, case, it's Brock Purdy. Yep. And they affected Brock Purdy in a way Lamar Jackson was not affected by the San Francisco 49ers. And I think in the end, that's the difference in this game. Last note I would mention, if the Niners win their last two games, Commanders, Rams, they will be the one seed in the NFC. So there's yeah. some small solace even. Oh, you know, loss. playing those Commanders. <laughs> Ooh, watch out. <laughs> Saw them yesterday. Talking we'll see. Squad, though. <laughs> Tongue in cheek. Our postgame. Brunch, it's time for the Raiders. <laughs> and the Chiefs. The Chiefs have in seconds that Raider defense scores two touchdowns. Jack Jones with a huge pick six. It's his second in as many weeks, and he gives Patrick Mahomes the stare down. The reckless eyeball. Afterwards, Patrick Mahomes, what's going on, man? 
two mistakes that uh, gave them two touchdowns there down the when you're backed up um, in their red zone. So um, you just can't do that, especially when defense is playing like they're playing. So I just got to be better in that sense and not making those mistakes and uh, try to find a way to play the game um, in the best way to win it. It's just we got to clean it up. I mean, I, I mean that's we're two games left. You have to do it, and if we don't, we'll be going home. So I think if we clean it up, uh, we'll have if we clean it up, we can beat anybody. Uh, I truly believe that, um, but uh, we got to prove that we can do it. Ryan, whether it's been on Monday Night Countdown or on Sports Center, you have praised Mahomes as being an incredible teammate yes. for going out of his way to, to take the punches for others. At the moment, how much of his play is that is one of the root causes the Chiefs just aren't who we're used to seeing them be? A lot of it, and today, most of it. It's now Patrick Mahomes is allowing what's going on with the rest of his teammates and the rest of this team to affect his play. When we when we were sitting on the sideline and he threw the football to MVS against Philadelphia, yep. after the game, he yep. said, what? I could have thrown it better. You were never going to be like, yes, you could have thrown it better, Patrick. No, right. But now, if he would step up to the podium and when he says, I need to play better, we say you absolutely do and we're seeing some of that frustration roll over not only into his play but in the way that he's dealing with his teammates because he now understands that as great as he is he still can't overcome that sort of bad play and miss execution don't want to overreact and turn this into they're not good of course they're good yeah. they're, they're not what they've been and they, they're going to have to hit mm -hmm. the road at some point for the first time in his career in the playoffs when they do what are they at the moment? Right, right now, they're a good football team that's not a great football team. Mm, okay. They're a good football team that doesn't have solutions to the questions that we've been asking the entire season. Where is Travis Kelsey being able to step up and be that force multiplier? Where is the Patrick Mahomes who we watch with a makeshift offensive line and guys on the outside that wouldn't make plays still be the best player in the Super Bowl against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? And now you have a defense that if you look late in that game, mm -hmm. they were so worn down that they couldn't tackle Zeus when he was running the four minute and we knew it would be running plays. You know why? Because the Raiders said we're not throwing it ever in the second half. <laughs> didn't complete so when, right, in the first quarter. <laughs> Right. And so when you think about this team, there's so much they need to change and so much yep. they need to get better at, but they don't have time, Scott. No, you're right. I mean, kind of. this is who they are. And, yep. and hat tip to Antonio Pierce and the Raiders. They said they wanted to make it a violent game. Mm -hmm. They did. They were the more aggressive team. They were the better team. They Scott, did. should Antonio be the head coach of that team? Give him the job. All right, let's go to Philadelphia, NFC East battle. These two teams played twice in the last three weeks. This is the first from DeAndre Swift in a two-point game early fourth. One of the many Georgia Bulldogs on this team touched down its back to a two-score game. How about Tyrod Taylor comes in for DeVito, and this was this is a, a very capable yeah. backup in it, this it's league. It's a very capable backup, a guy that's been a starter, and you saw the difference in the second half in his passing offense. Darius Slayton gets in, and it's a one-score game. Eight points is the difference. It's going to take a lot to go right. The Giants have got time. Taylor keeping his eyes downfield, and then another Bulldog. Keelan Ringo, <laughs> his first pick in the NFL. That puts this to bed, and it puts the brakes on that losing streak for Philadelphia. We were in Seattle on Monday. Yeah. When Seattle stole that one. We know Philadelphia is a good team. This time of year, just to get a win, however, with Arizona and then New York mm -hmm. up next, does it, does it calm any questions you may have about no, the it, Philadelphia No, it doesn't, is? because if you look at the last two second half, this second halves, this is a defense that gave up leads or almost gave up leads to two backup quarterbacks and Tyrod Taylor and Drew Locke the week before. They have been weak in the secondary throughout the season and that doesn't seem to be changing and you also have to be concerned about the pick six because the turnover woes for this offense continue. But the path for them to the NFC East title is still very yep. much in their hands. Again, it's Arizona and the Giants the last two weeks for Philadelphia. Coming up in the second half, San Francisco gets the football coming out of the các cái nhỏ thứ nhất không cần phải quá to đâu bởi vì là cái phần mà uh, cái phần chủ yếu của mình là sẽ chính là cái phần chuồng bóng mà thế nên là nếu mà các bạn sẽ làm cái nơ to quá thì mình nó sẽ lấn át hết cả cái chuồng bóng của mình thì uh, mình sẽ cắt cái nơ bé thôi nhé đây đây sẽ là cái phần nơ của mình này hơi bé nhé các bạn nhìn mình làm hơi bị khó nhé. Rồi, làm mình dán cái phần nơ này vào giữa cái chuồng bóng như này nhé. Đây như các bạn, mình sẽ có một cái nơ nhỏ nhỏ xinh xinh, à, nó sẽ ở cái phần góc này. Rồi, bây giờ mình sẽ đi uh, nối cái phần hai cái phần thân của cái uh, chiếc túi này vào với nhau nhé. Thì mình sẽ sử dụng một cái tờ giấy hình uh, hình chữ nhỉ, màu 
xem như này thì mình sẽ lấy cái phần thân của hai cái mặt của chiếc túi lại với nhau nhé Đây thì các bạn sẽ uh, cái phần này làm ba cho mình Đây Được làm ba như này Sau đó các bạn sẽ dán cái phần này lên trên cái phần thân của cái chiếc túi nhé Cắt bớt đi Cắt bớt đi đây sau đó thì mình sẽ uh, dán cái phần này lên đây nhé để tạo thành cái phần thân nối hai cái mặt của cái uh, chiếc túi này lại với nhau đây như các bạn các bạn dán vào đây giúp mình rồi đây là cái mặt bên dưới đây là cái mặt bên trên rồi các bạn sẽ dán keo vào đây nhé theo cái phần trên này thì mình sẽ đặt cái phần mặt này lên trên này các bạn sẽ đặt hai cái phần này sao cho nó uh, cân với nhau giúp mình nhé đây thì đây sẽ là cái uh, phần chiếc túi của mình nha các bạn sau đó thì mình sẽ đi làm cái bước cuối cùng đó là mình sẽ đi cắt cái phần quai cho cái chiếc túi này thì mình sẽ sử dụng màu vàng nhé màu vàng nhạt như này đây màu vàng nhạt để mình làm cái phần quai của cái túi thôi. Đây, các bạn dán vào hai bên. Dán vào đây. Và tiếp tục làm cái phần này vào đây. Đây, như vậy là mình đã hướng dẫn xong các bạn cách để làm được một chiếc túi sách màu xanh dương này và bên trên được trang trí một chuồng bóng bay rất là